When I say your photography follows a theme, I mean that there is some clearly visible technique, rule or subject that you follow and integrate in your photography so much that it becomes part of your work, your style or even yourself. It's something that leads your photography into a certain direction. When a theme is spotted, it is what the viewer then connects to you or your work. In today's video, I want to dive into this topic a bit further, discuss the nature of themes in photography with you, and show you two Instagram pages plus one photographer, which I love for their themed photography. So, let's begin by breaking down the term theme. A theme is a concept not solely utilised in photography, but in all forms of creation and art. In my research, it seemed like the term theme is mostly referred to in the art of writing and literature. In this practice, a theme is not the story or the plot. It's an idea that is woven throughout the plot and the story. It only has a conceptual and abstract connection to the story and its characters. A theme does not directly refer to a character in the story, instead it is a central idea or message communicated via the characters and the story. A theme in any other form of art is not much different. In music, for example, a theme can be a melodic subject or a concentration on certain aspects such as pacing and movement, or a theme can be the careful choice of the instruments which at first glance don't appear to be a theme. But when the whole work is observed from a distance, the theme can be recognised. This act of zooming out and viewing the work as a whole instead of the single pieces of work is essential to determine a theme. Themes are not to be seen in the work that stands alone, but in the collection of many pieces which are connected by this theme. Imagine a puzzle. Each piece by itself will not reveal the full picture, but once the puzzle is put together and viewed from afar, you will see the full picture. In art, however, the puzzle analogy is flawed because a single piece of the puzzle can't be presented solitarily, whereas in art, let's return to our example of music, a song can be. In this case, the theme will be noticeable when listening to the album. Explained in this way, a theme might now sound abstract and hence complex, but it's actually fairly simple and can easily act as a guide for your own art. Seeing as my channel here is a photography channel, I believe there is a high chance that the art you create is photography. So what can a theme be or look like in photography? I would like to show you an example that I found a couple months ago. On Instagram, I came across this page called Analog Plants. The name says it all. This is a page dedicated to film photography of plants, or at least photos that feature plants as one of the main subjects in the composition. And there you have it, that's a theme. The theme this page has created for itself and diligently follows is that the photograph has to feature plants, and the photograph must originate from film. These photos perfectly demonstrate the point of the necessity of zooming out to recognize a theme. Each photograph here can stand alone as a piece of art, and only when viewed as a whole, as a collection, do we realise that these photos all have two things in common. So you see, a theme is not really that complex or hard to grasp and can effectively add a conceptual layer to your photographic work. To widen your imagination of possible themes in photography, I would like to give you some more examples. So, similar to this theme of analog plants, I found this other Instagram page called Street Cola. When viewing the work featured on this page, you will quickly see the theme. This page is a collection of street photography, featuring the branding of Coca-Cola. I really enjoy the conceptual and sort of socio-critical side of this theme. It points out the vast influence the famous, striking red branding of Coca-Cola has on the picture of our cities and towns streets. The company is so huge and influential that in our everyday lives it seemingly has become omnipresent, or so suggest many photos seen on this page. Please consider, of course, that this is simply my subjective interpretation. These themes so far have been rather visual and had a direct influence on the choice of subject. However, I would like to point out that a theme can also be more subtle and be harder to recognize when simply looking at the gallery. 
For example, let's imagine you're working on a photography series and you decided to follow a theme of unease. Your goal is to create a body of work that evokes a feeling of uneasiness in the viewer. This theme is on a felt level, whereas the others were on a visual level. I assume that feeling a theme is probably harder than seeing one, so recognizing it might take longer. Next, I want to introduce you to the photographer who led to the making of this video, Hiroshi Masuko. A while ago, I coincidentally found his Instagram page and immediately saw that Hiroshi follows a theme. I mean, it's not hard to spot, it's written in his bio. He calls himself a Mount Fuji photographer, which, when browsing his gallery, becomes pretty apparent. What I love about his approach to this theme is that he does not aim to portray Mount Fuji. What he does is feature Mount Fuji. The mountain becomes a reoccurring character in his photography, but it doesn't give the impression of being the protagonist. Of course, in many photos it certainly is, but in just as many, if not even more, Mount Fuji is found somewhere in the back, or it is pictured rather small, which gives it much less significance in the composition than the actual subject. Hiroshi's photographs give Mount Fuji this constant presence, which can evoke varying feelings. For me, I of course tend to romanticize these things and feel a sense of home. In essence, this is exactly what Hiroshi does. He has this anchor point, Mount Fuji, and a circle around it, which defines his spatial restriction in which he moves to find his photographs. We, as the viewer, always see that he is in this circle thanks to Mount Fuji's presence in every photo. And for me, this circle represents home, a space of familiarity. This is something I personally always enjoy in photography, this subjectivism and individuality in photos when they picture a place that, for the photographer, is familiar, but for me, as the viewer, is totally unknown. As a side note, let me add one more aspect of Hiroshi's photography this constant presence of Mount Fuji creates. It evokes a feeling of anticipation. As the viewer, I understand the theme Hiroshi is following, and this leads to me anticipating the presence of Mount Fuji, and I begin to look for it when it's not the main subject. It almost becomes a game of finding Mount Fuji at first glance of each picture. Now that I have dived into the nature of themes in photography, I think we should reflect a theme's effect on the photographer and whether it is something that we should consider pursuing. So most of the time, a theme represents a restriction. And as we have all heard before, restrictions stimulate creativity. So in this sense, themes seem to be pretty useful and something worth trying. On the other hand, this could of course turn around after some time and lead the photographer in circles, resulting in repetitive photographs. So as basically always, there is no clear line to draw, no definite answer to give, but what I believe can be claimed is that it's worth trying. Probably a mixture is the ideal method of implementing a theme in your photography. I'm sure Hiroshi Masuko has a large catalogue of non-Fuji photographs, which he simply doesn't present online. This is a way of balancing the use of a theme, which enables the enjoyment of both photographing a theme, but also creating in total artistic freedom. So what do you think of a theme in photography, as seen in the examples I showed you? Do you have a theme yourself, or are you considering one? I'm curious about your thoughts on this topic, so let me know in the comments. I hope I could introduce you to a topic you maybe hadn't thought about much yet, and you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate a like on the video, that helps me grow this channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll hopefully see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.